everyone. How are you doing this evening? I hope everyone is doing well and that perhaps you are ready to go to bed. Uh, it's just before my bedtime, so I made myself some tea and I lit some candles and I thought I would show you guys a tarot reading type which I think I invented I'm not sure <laughs> because I I think I have come up with it because it I just one day I felt like I really needed some guidance and um, I needed something to to uh, guide my attention and my focus and I couldn't really find any readings that would provide me with what I was looking for. So I think I have come up with this reading type and um, it's in my tarot journal. I did this reading back in June last year and so it's a four card reading and uh, I'm gonna show you how it's done now so you can you can do it if you want to you can try it it's I think it's excellent for um, for winding down at the end of a day that was filled with action and uncertainty and stress and anxiety and uh, I really do believe that it can it can provide some meaningful answers. And uh, I remember it helped me tremendously back then when I did this reading for myself. So I'm just going to make some space before we get into it. And I'm going to be using the Mother Peace Tarot, which is a circular tarot deck. If you haven't seen me use it before, I don't often use it, but um, this time I felt guided to use it for some reason. So the first card that we are going to pick after I've shuffled and and fan the cards is going to represent the meditation focus. So this card is going to be the center of our attention in this tarot meditation. Since it's a circular deck, there's really no reversals with this one. So it's not really a, a thing. The next card is going to represent the hidden resources that we can utilize so past evidence of of our strength and whatever is still hidden I remember that this helped me so much I was at a very difficult point in my life when I came up with this reading and it really helped me out a great deal all right, the next card is going to represent the ambition. 
So that's the card. That's the energy that is pulling us out of our sense of being stuck. Okay. And finally, a manifestation card. This is the card that we can use as an aid to manifest a different future for ourselves. So, the first card, the focus of our attention and the focus of our meditation is the chariot. The hidden resources of energy are represented by the Seven of Swords. And I'm going to zoom into the cards later on so that you can see the details better. Okay. The energy of ambition that is pulling us out of our current position is the Nine of Cups. And finally, what we can use, the, the manifestation device that's going to help us shape our new future is the Two of Swords. All right. So let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the first card, the chariot. The chariot is a major arcana card. And by the way, this reading, I had the intent with this reading to, to actually have this reading apply to me and anybody else who's watching. So if you feel like uh, this reading is for you, then it's not an accident. It is because you were meant to find this reading and it was meant to speak to you at this time. So, the chariot, and I feel like this card applies to my life right now, like a glove. It really fits very well. And uh, so what it really is about is about willpower. This is the chariot here. And it's about pushing through and making things happen 
against all odds. So no matter what is going on, no matter how difficult the circumstances are, this card is inviting us to focus our attention on our solar plexus, which is the chakra, you know, with the yellow color. And it's, um, it's a card that focuses our attention in our sense of individuality. So I'm sensing a lot of a lot of guilt here. Guilt about wanting to do what we want to do. Feeling ashamed of who we are deep within. This card is inviting us to to drop those negative feelings and those beliefs and become a slave to our own individuality. Um, this card right now reminds me of um, this Hungarian-born uh, Canadian psychologist. His name is Andrew Feldmar. And uh, he often em emphasizes the importance of of being who we are and without labels. So this is this card to me right now represents the importance of being unapologetically who we are, no matter what. So Andrew Feldmar says that it doesn't matter whether you're good or bad. Doesn't matter what you are, whether you're lazy or um, needy or imperfect. There's just, a, it's just who you are. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't strive to try to improve yourself. But in the present moment, you have to accept that whatever you are, however you are manifesting in this universe, is just uh, the play of the universal mind. And in whatever imperfect form you're coming through is okay. And the chariot represents this... Um, relentless, uncompromising acceptance of who we are, what we are, with our imperfections, our flaws, our unique personality traits, everything, the whole package, and refusing anyone's attempts to try to label us in any way and saying I am who I am but please don't label me because maybe five minutes from now it's not gonna be true whatever drawer or category you're trying to put me into Interestingly enough, the hidden sources of, of strength and, and power are represented by the Seven of Swords. And let me just have a sip of tea here before I start explaining what it's about. Swords represent the mind, and the Seven of Swords is the uh, ability of our minds to be manipulative. And 
I see this as a survival tactic for you and for me from the past. Being able to deceive others in order to preserve ourselves. The seven swords in this image become a ladder and they are helping the fox get to the chicken in the yard. So what I'm really getting from this is a sense of shamelessness. So really, um, our situation right now requires us to be crafty, resourceful, perhaps um, deceitful even. And I'm reminded of the saying, uh, the end justify the means or something like that. So basically, as long as our focus is the chariot, which is personal liberation and self-empowerment, and it's a major arcana card, so we know that this is, this is important stuff, so we're not playing around. As long as that's our main focus, the Seven of Swords can come into play and help us, if necessary. And it's an interesting message, but I do agree with it. Uh, it's a huge taboo subject, the lack of honesty. Obviously, on on a superficial level, everybody uh, emphasizes the importance of honesty. But it is such an important thing, such an important skill to be dishonest sometimes. And that might sound shocking to you, but um, but let's think about it. You know that when a child, when they are growing up, they are, uh, they often lie. And that's a sign of high intelligence and, and creative imagination and social skills. So it's actually a good sign if your child starts lying at a young age then you know that they are smart and that they are resourceful. And uh, it's an important skill to have, to be able to um, protect ourselves when necessary by lying. And, and I, I do not mean the malicious type of lie that is... that is aimed at, you know, uh, acquiring some sort of um, extra benefit or gain. It's more about, it's more about protecting the self, I think. But here in this deck, we see the fox uh, trying to trying to get to the, the chicken and that might seem like a malicious act but if you think about it the fox is hungry he wants to eat he needs to survive so this isn't you know a luxury hunter who goes to Africa to uh, to shoot a uh, a rare species um, just for fun. It's, uh, it's a, a question of life 
or death. So if you find yourself in a situation where it's life or death for you, where it's important that you survive whatever is going on, please don't feel ashamed if you feel inclined to be, to bend the truth, to be dishonest. Because it's, it can be useful, it can be, uh, can be essential to survival. For example, if a, a Nazi guard comes into your uh, house and asks, you know, do you have any Jews in your, uh, in your uh, closet? Well, obviously you'll have to lie for them. And your lie will have to be convincing enough so that you preserve them and you keep them from being discovered. So truth and lying are are an interesting topic and it's not black and white. And please don't put additional uh, pressure on yourself if you feel like you cannot be honest with someone for any reason. The only important thing, and I think this is why this card is in the in the middle position, is that you keep true to yourself, that you tell yourself the truth as long as you know what the truth is. You'll eventually be able to tell the truth if it's important and you won't lose track of it. Now the energy that's pulling us out of our current situation, and I see that we are in a a bit of a pickle. It seems like we're hanging by a thread in a way. And the motivation to to pull ourselves out of here is the nine of pentacles. Uh, sorry, the nine nine of nine of cups. Sorry. Um Cups are water, so this is a card of emotions. Um, this reminds me of the fact that the only way to get out of a situation is to want to get away from it or to be drawn to to another place. So you're either chased by something or you're running after something all the time. And this time it seems like you're more in the mindset of of this idyllic utopic image, this vision of carelessness and fulfillment. And the Nine of Cups, as opposed to the Ten of Cups, is a card of personal happiness. So, it's asking the question, what makes you happy? What do you want your life to be? How do you want to live? And... And this is also suggesting to me that a good way to move forward and to leave this difficult situation behind is to is to keep our mind focused on on this utopia that we're somewhat familiar with already. We created it in our mind, in our imagination, but it's not sharp enough, it's not detailed enough. So a good way to 
to pull ourselves out of the negativity is to imagine that positivity as vividly and in as much detail as we can. And that brings us to the next card, the last card actually, which is the manifestation card. And that's the Two of Swords. The Two of Swords. So it's representing the mind again. Is a card of um, finding balance, inner balance, and focusing our attention inward. So this reading in many ways is such a selfish reading <laughs> um, depending on what you what your definition of selfish is obviously I think it's maybe a better word to describe it would be self-centered or, or focused around the self um, so the two of swords would indicate the necessity to ignore outside influences that are not aligning with this Nine of Cups, this um, this ideal situation, this uh, paradise, this future paradise that we're craving. So do not focus on the problems that much. Do not get caught up in the... in in the moment of what's wrong, what needs to be improved. Obviously you need to uh, deal with that to a certain extent, but do not get caught up in it too much. Ignore it as much as you can. And that way your mind is going to be warmed up to the idea of the Nine of Cups paradise that you're after. So the way to manifest is to ignore things that are unnecessary, that are holding you back. And another thing that I'm, I'm getting from this reading, this is quite an advanced reading, by the way. Um, and what I mean by that is there's lots of topics here that um, that are difficult and not black and white and not easy to pull off so if you have stumbled upon this reading and chose to watch it there's a good chance that you can that you have good command of these of these energies that you probably are not a harmful, selfish person who is out there to destroy the world. Otherwise, this reading would be catastrophic. Because it would just encourage you to destroy uh, your environment. But I feel like you are not that kind of person. And instead you are someone who is probably on the same frequency as I am. The same journey of just trying to liberate the self. And trying to shed some of the, some of the programming that was, uh, that was done in the past. And trying to become more authentic and in order to do that we need to we need to become more accepting of who we are even our shadow so this I think this is about the integration of the shadow ultimately which I want to make another video about in the future so stay tuned for that. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. I hope that you were able to get something out of it. 
and I hope to see you in my next video.